Hey what's up guys, today we are going to be looking at cane enable in a very broad or basic manner so we can build our skill set from the ground up. I will also be going over some common issues that beginners have when first installing cane enable and how to avoid them. Please enjoy. Alright, so let's get started with the download first. Um, you're going to have to search up Kane and Able or go to the download link in the description. You're looking for www.oxid.it Kane and Able HTML. Once you get onto this page, you're looking for this download right here. Um, I don't think anybody's going to need this download up here, so just click on this and let that all right so once you have that all downloaded you should get a file that says ca setup now try just opening it and if that doesn't work use run as administrator because it might give you an error that says you need to run this as administrator all right so once you allow can enable privileges to your computer you're going to get the setup wizard which is actually really simple to use you just press next if you want to read this stuff you can um, you can pick a place for the file to sit. Uh, this is probably the best, best place for it anyways. Just keep pressing next. Now when you press finish, this is very important, make sure you press install. I already have it so I'm not going to install it again. See if I try to install it, it gives me this. But you should definitely install it or else you're going to have a lot of problems in the future. Alright, so once you have Kane Enable installed, just simply run it. Uh, the error about Windows Firewall won't be an, a big issue right now, so don't worry about it. But um, this interface may be a little overwhelming at first, but that's okay. I'll talk you guys through it. So the, there's quite a few different sections to cover, but the main ones that you'll probably be using are the decoder, which is how you can recover passwords through things like the Windows Vault, through Internet Explorer and all your wireless passwords. Um, the sniffer, which is a big one um, for finding devices on your network, running man in the middle attacks, um, all sorts of things. And then there's the cracker where you can come and crack all sorts of password hashes. Um, they have quite a few here like LM and NTLM, MD2, MD4, MD5, SHA1 and SHA2. For the most part, Kane enables pretty out of date when it comes to password hashes. Uh, there's a lot better programs that you can use but it's here just in case you want to play with that. And there's a wireless section here and uh, the problem with wireless in Kane Enable is that it was never designed to do anything wirelessly so everything is based on Ethernet and so if you don't have an Ethernet connection with your computer you're gonna have a lot of trouble with Kane and you might want to reconsider what you're using because it's going to be a huge headache just to get that working. Um, I'm just putting that out there now. Alright, so let's get started with the decoder section. And so, the decoder section basically can recover any passwords that you've really entered in on the Windows system. So, uh, let's start with wireless passwords actually. And when you click on this box and then press this little blue plus up here, you're going to get all the wireless passwords that you've entered in and any connections that you've connected to. So uh, this is actually a desktop, so I only have one network right here. And this is also a printer right here, so that's kind of interesting because sometimes it's actually easier just to look at this than it is to go and find, uh, look at the back of your router or whatever to get the password. The Windows Vault is actually a pretty interesting feature. So basically when you press this plus, any passwords that you've entered in on Internet Explorer are going to pop up here. And um, these are obviously... I don't use Internet Explorer that much, so there's not that many passwords saved, but it's a pretty interesting way of recovering passwords that you may have lost, and it also shows the username, which is super handy. Um, things like the credential manager and stuff, those are going to be uh, system saved passwords that you've entered in. So as we continue to explore uh, Kane Enable, let's come over here to the cracker. And so what the cracker does is we can crack um, all sorts of hashes that they have stored on here, but one really cool feature is that you can, if you just click on this box and press the blue button, um, there's all sorts of settings you can tweak here, but just press next. 
and you'll get the accounts that are on this local machine. And so I have this fun account right here uh, set up as Shrek Lover. And um, as you can see, most of these have uh, no password in them, but this one actually does have a password. So uh, let's ha find out what we can do with that. Um, so of course we can run a dictionary attack, which is basically just uh, creating a word list, uh, maybe of common passwords, or maybe it has, it's a specialized word list for the target. Um, pretty efficient attack, attack, but you have to get pretty lucky to get right with it. So let's look at brute force attack, and if you come down to NTLM hashes here, and you just click on that, uh, you can see that we can set up a, an attack right here. So there's a couple predefined character sets here, and you can also set up your own custom set. So you could make it whatever you wanted, and you, maybe you knew that they had a percent in their thing, and nothing else. You could have that. And over here is the password length, so you could adjust that accordingly if you... I mean, I'm sure the person you're targeting probably doesn't have a 22 character long password, so you could probably narrow that down to say 8. And if you just come over here and press start, you can actually get a timed estimation of how long it will take to brute force all these passwords, which is pretty interesting. So as you can see, if the current password was 8 characters long, it used this character set it would take about six hours to crack and of course this varies uh, quite a bit from computer to computer um, Kane Enable does not use any sort of GPU to crack, uh, brute force these passwords it's mainly CPU so if you have a quad-core processor or anything better than that it's uh, gonna be pretty efficient but um, that's just something to play around with uh, you can test the strengths of your passwords Alright, so the next thing I want to talk about is the uh, all the variety of hashes that you can decrypt and how to create a hash. So if you come up here to the hash calculator, just click on that, you can enter in anything you want. I'll just put test right here. Come down to calculate. Once you press that, it'll create uh, encrypt your hash and a number of encryption methods. Um, so there's you can really use any of these. Uh, let's just use MD2. So just copy your hash. Now leave that. Let's go to MD hash. Um, press the blue plus again. Put your hash inside. Press OK. And now we're going to brute force attack it again. Like I said, you can still do dictionary attacks. And we already know. Um, well, since we already know our password, let's just make this a little bit quicker. Uh, let's go custom. Let's only use letters. Now let's press start. So as you can see it's already cracked the password. That was a matter of seconds. Obviously MD2 is a pretty outdated encryption method so it's not that strong in general and also we only we knew almost exactly what the password was so that's okay. So that was actually just only like two of a very large amount of things that you can do with the cracker and I encourage you guys to keep exploring because even now I just click on random things and I find new things to play around with but um anyways uh, if any of you guys were hoping that we'd get to the sniffer in this video I'm sorry we couldn't um, I will be making a completely separate video on the sniffer just because it's such a large category and there's so much stuff you can do with it that uh, I, th I thought it was necessary to make a completely new video for it. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, leave any comments if you have any questions about anything because I know there are a lot of errors with Kane Enable and sometimes it's a little annoying but don't worry. You'll get it all figured out and working. Um, but anyways, until next time, this is Lucid Hack Security Tutorials. Thanks for watching.